I was willing to give Muse Group the benefit of the doubt and just assume that whatever their plans with Audacity were going to be, they were going to be positive. And when they handled the telemetry situation, I think they did a really good job with that. I didn't really have a big problem with it in the first place because it was going to be opt-in. If you have opt-in Google Analytics, I don't really care if you opt into that, that's your problem. But they decided to try another thing. This time they wanted to introduce the new contributor license agreement. Now, if you don't know what a CLA is, basically you'll be required to sign this before you submit any code, otherwise it won't be merged. And once you sign the CLA, basically you sign away certain rights you'd have to the code. Now, CLAs aren't inherently bad. Some people like Drew DeVault just think that you should never sign a CLA and signing a CLA is inherently bad, but like a code of conduct, the most important thing to a CLA is the terms. Now, most of the terms are fairly basic things like, hey, you agree that when you submit this code, you are actually the one that owns that code. You're not stealing someone else's code and submitting it to the project or other things like, you agree that when you submit code to the project, it may not actually make its way into the final build, but you still agree to submit it. There is not a single person in the FOSS world that would ever disagree with those points. The point that is being disagreed with though, is the first one. You grant the owners of Audacity, an affiliate of MuseScore and Ultimate Guitar, the ability to use contributions in any way. In any way is very important here, and then this next part basically means that you waiver all your rights to the code and they can relicense the project as they see fit. Now, what does that actually mean? Well, what that means is a project like Audacity, which is licensed under GPL v2 or later, if they have all of the contributors sign, they can take the code base proprietary tomorrow and there is literally nothing that can be done about it. That is the extreme danger that comes with an open CLA. Now, I still disagree that CLAs are inherently bad because you could define the terms as being, okay, we can relicense the project, but only as a GPL derivative, for example, and then you don't have that problem. They say they wanna update the license from GPL v2 to GPL v3 because technologies like VST3 aren't actually compatible with GPL v2. Now, there's one problem with this, and that is that Audacity isn't actually licensed under GPL v2. As it says in the readme, it's licensed under either version 2 of the license, or at your option, any later version, which is GPL v2 or later. So they're either lying about the license, or they don't know the license of their own project. So you don't need the CLA to do this, but assuming it wasn't GPL v2 or later, it was just GPL v2, they still had to contact the developers to get them to sign the CLA. If they wanted to update it to GPL v3, you can still contact the developers to do the exact same thing. One of the other things they say they'd like to offer is separate cloud services that Audacity users can take advantage of if they choose. These services will fund the development of Audacity in much the same way that MuseScore.com funds the development of MuseScore composition software. Now, these obviously would be paid web services. I don't think there's really that big of a problem there. Like, I get someone's going to argue about that, but as long as they're not taking features that should be in the software and then moving them onto a paid web service, I don't think there's really any arguments to be made there. If you're going to have something on the paid web service, it should be something that can only exist on the paid web service. But from what I and other commenters understand, whether the license is GPL v2, GPL v2 or later, or GPL3, the CLA isn't something that's preventing you from doing this. You can already do it right now with the existing code base. But I have another concern. They say these services will fund the future development of Audacity, not they will help to fund. So what that means to me is they don't have a way to fund the development of Audacity. Why did you buy a project that you don't know how to fund? Now, this might be kind of controversial, but they would like to make Audacity available to everyone. This includes on proprietary stores like the Apple Store and the iOS Store. Now, you might think if you know nothing about Apple that this would be entirely fine to do under GPL, but because of weird Apple-y politics, GPL v2 and GPL v3 projects aren't actually allowed on the Apple Store. 
So when they say this is the reason why VLC Media Player was removed from the store back in 2011, they are being mostly truthful, but they are still lying by omission. So they say that VLC then later returned to the store, but not under GPL. That makes it sound like there's like a proprietary version of VLC just for the Apple stores. And that is not the case whatsoever. Because back in 2011, VLC was dual licensed under GPL V2 and LGPL, lesser GPL which doesn't actually conflict with the Apple Store. I do feel like this point is intended to mislead you a little bit. Now there's another project that had this exact same problem, and that was Nextcloud with their iOS version. So basically Nextcloud iOS is licensed under GPL V3 with an Apple Store exception where basically it will be GPL v3, except for the conditions that conflict with the store. And this is entirely fine. And they could have done this because they contacted the developers to ask them about the CLA. So they could have contacted them instead about an Apple Store exception. They have another reason for wanting the CLA, and this one actually relates to MuseScore. So when they acquired MuseScore, it already had a CLA. It had a CLA basically since the start of the project. And this is what allowed them to go and make the proprietary version of the mobile app. Now, this is a problem. So when they acquired Audacity, they would like to share the code between Audacity and MuseScore, but you can't do that because one of the projects is GPL v2 or later. So trying to do that would break the license. And I thought that was fair enough until I thought for like another second. Why did you buy a project that has an incompatible license if your intention is to share that code? I don't know if Muse Group is just incompetent or doesn't understand FOSS licenses because that is a really dumb point. Speaking of dumb points, what if I say that Muse Group doesn't even know what GPL is? So this is a response to someone saying, your code, since when is code done by the community your code? That's not how FOSS and the GPL license works. And the response to that is, the CLA works the other way too. Code that is created by contributors that are paid by Muse is actually owned by Muse under the terms of the contributor's employment agreement until the point that it is merged. Now that's entirely fair enough, most companies do have that. But he goes on to say, because the contributor also signs the CLA, the code that is contributed is made available under GPL in addition to the proprietary ownership of that code prior to it being merged into the GPL project. No, that's not the case at all. That code has to be GPL. If that code can't be made GPL, it cannot be merged into the project. And if your employment terms say that that cannot happen, once again, why did you buy a project that has an incompatible license? I know I keep hammering this point, but it's a really important point. Muse Group claims they have people working for them that understand FOSS, but you clearly don't if you bought a project like this. All of the stuff so far has been pretty bad, but this is where I lost any last hope that Muse Group is actually worth trusting. So Tantacruel, who's supposed to be the new face of Audacity said, I'm waiting to see the reaction. It's my job to make sure this stuff is out in the open so it can be discussed. The CLA was always going to be an issue many contributors would find unpopular. I'm not going to engage too much in defending it here. I just want to hear what you all think first. He is openly lying here. Maybe he cares, but Muse Group doesn't, because as we see from Worked In Theory, the guy who actually authored this post, towards the bottom of it he says, the opportunity to comment and discuss this issue has raised many valuable points and important perspectives have been shared. Even though that is the case, this feedback will not influence the outcome. Each point has been clearly heard and duly noted. So you do accept the feedback, you just don't care about it. But why would they care? Before they even opened up the discussion, they already contacted the main contributors and 90% of all written code in Audacity is covered by the CLA. So even if you object to it, doesn't matter, they already own the code base. Having that last 10% be rewritten under the CLA wouldn't really take that long. But this just makes sense for Muse Group because this is how they like to operate. So on their other 
open source project, MuseScore, over 80% of code line changes, insertions, and deletions on that project have been made by people who are or were members of the internal team. So even if the community stops working on Audacity, it's still going to be developed basically just as well. I am going to be keeping a very close eye on Audacity and Muse Group as we go into the future. I expect them to make some other mistake again in the future, and when they do, you can expect another video. I don't know why basically no one is talking about this. I know the whole Freenode thing happened, that sort of took everyone's attention, but I'm pretty sure there's only two videos on the CLA. This is a really, really big deal for Audacity. It can completely destroy it as a FOSS project. Now, the irony in the original poster's name being worked in theory is not lost in me. It is kind of funny. So that'll be everything for me. And before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Joachim, Donald, Logan, Michael, Andre, Nathan, David, Carl, Will, Brennan, Chica Bento, Jamie, Joseph, Josh, Mitchell, Peter, the Stephen Tease, Theroux, Tony Tushar, and all of my two dollars supporters. If you'd like to go and support me, work the links down below to my Patreon, subscribe, star, leave a pay, all that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over Tea, available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel where I do gaming live streams twice a week. That is Brody Robertson Plays, and this channel is also available over on Odyssey. So that's everything for me, and I'm out.